Hello friends! Happy New Year! Welcome to the first live stream in in a while. I don't know when the last one was. Um, I'm not going to look it up now, but it's been it's been quite a while. Um, so yeah, guys, hope you uh, slit slat into 2023 in style, and um, hope you had a good first Monday of the year. <laughs> uh, I did actually party quite good, and then I also worked quite good uh, already yesterday, so it was was quite the intense start. Even though I'm feeling a little tired, I am very motivated to create more art this year. Uh, as always, I mean, making art is uh, what, I, what I love, and um, it's, it's good that the motivation is there, even though probably I have a bit of a hard time getting out of bed in the morning <laughs> at times, but uh, we'll get there, we'll get there. It's, it's, I mean, it's January, it's gray outside, it's dark outside, so well. So, uh, Martinez, yeah, it's been a minute, that's right. Um, Danny, Ricardo, cheers, you guys, thanks for coming in. Um, welcome to the stream. And, um, yeah, uh, tell me how uh, your first days of the year have been, uh, what your plans for this year are, if you are going to make art as well. Uh, I'd, be, I'd love to, to hear about that. Uh, I'm G, hello. Quint, Quintine, <laughs> cheers guys. Uh, all the best to France, across from Germany, of course. Yeah, yeah, Anton, that's right. A uh, long time no see. I, I, I should have a look at um, the date of the last stream. Uh, I was talking about that topic of streaming a lot last year, about my decision to not go live so often anymore because it really takes a lot of preparation and, and time and everything. Also energy. I mean, I love I love this, but it also takes takes energy. And um, I had so much work last year. Um, I'm happy about that, uh, obviously. But um, not everything was able was I able to stream. You know, commissioned work isn't always um, made for to to be shown in the, in an early stage. So that was not so easy. And um, then I wanted to focus more on pre-made content on YouTube and that didn't work as well because I <laughs> didn't have enough time. So um, 23 is hopefully, hopefully, we'll see if it works out. I won't, don't want to put too much pressure on myself, but it's hopefully for making new or more video, video content more regularly. So that's my goal. We'll see, i let it come to me and, and, and I, I'll, I'll take it as it comes, but um, that's at least what I have planned so far. Um, and yeah, occasionally, of course, we'll have, another, uh, we'll have a live stream here and there because it's just, um, it's just much fun and it's just a nice addition to the whole con content concept, I guess. Um, and much more intense for you guys to catch up with me and uh, to, to uh, for me as well to to get feedback from you to con have have a direct contact connection to you guys. Matthew, happy new, new year, man! Good to see you up already as well. <laughs> so uh, let's have a look at what we are doing today because uh, I am or I have been working on the Curious Cabins. Uh, again, a lot uh, in December and also uh, now in the new year for a new or, or for finishing the season number four. And I have two cabins left, two curious cabins left uh, for this season. If you don't know the project, um, it's it's a project where I draw different funny isometric cabins or isometric houses, architectural objects, some kind of, and um, we're going to have a drop, an NFT drop of season four with five new ones of these cabins uh, in just about nine days, yeah, nine days, that's not long. Um, 
Yeah, and I, I have to finish one more for this drop and then one more for another drop a little bit later. And I want to take you with me today to figure out the whole concept. Look, I'm going to explain to you what my idea for the con for the for this cabin is. And I'm also going to show you how I build and, and come up with a composition for this cabin. As you see, I'm already in the middle of the process. Uh, I did this, what you see here, I did this yesterday. And uh, then I had the idea to go live today and do it with you together um, before I work on the clean outlines and colors and everything. So, yeah, what's the idea behind this? Let's quickly have a look at my sketchbook. So this is the sketchbook page. And I wanted to have something uh, a little bit Asian influenced, like Chinese architecture, for example. And um, I saw a picture of a tangerine tree here and I saved it here in my sketchbook. And I love, I love, I mean, I love tangerines and I love how these trees look with this, right, when they are rich of fruits, you know, and um, just love the visuality of these. And I wanted to make a house that had these, these tangerine trees surround or even growing out of the house. And um, tangerines are very, very similar to, I don't know how, the, I think the process was like that tangerines and mandarin oranges are almost the same. Many people, at least here in Germany, there's mandarine and there's clementine, that's the, both, both the German terms for these. And many people use them as kind of for the same thing, you know. And uh, it's, yeah, what, what, what brought me to, because of mandarin orange, like coming from China, because it's a Chinese fruit originally, coming to this style of architecture. And I found this picture here on Pinterest um, from an architecture studio. I don't know if it's it's a Chinese studio or if, if this, this house is only in China, but because it's an ancient building that was really run down and half destroyed and they made a nice style mix with the old roofs and walls and the nice new glass inserts. Uh, I love that very much. This kind of gave me a really cool vibe. So uh, I took it as inspiration for, for these scribbles you see here. So you see there's the, the roofs here. Oops. Uh, no. There's um, the roof style here um, and part of this wall style here. And the, the idea was to make these tangerine trees grow out of this so that was that was the idea I had and also probably include some traditional Chinese um, I don't know what these are called these kind of balconies or something so I want maybe some some of these some of these lampions <laughs> is that a word uh, as well um, so to kind of mix mix a couple of things into one cabin that's kind of the process um, with all of my cabins, not only this one, to take aspects from different directions and mix them to one cabin. Saverio, thanks very much. Glad you like the, the colors. Yeah, today we're probably not going to get as far as, as coloring, but I'll do that uh, in another stream for sure. I also still on my long list of video ideas want to make a video containing my top coloring tips, but uh, it's something I didn't find the time to do so far, but it will come at some point this year, hopefully. <laughs> Talkable, hello, hello. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the concept um, part of it. And the next one is, or the next part is to make a scribble. Um, I was just going to get to the brush I'm using for scribbling, uh, Ricardo, so that your, your question is, comes to the right time there. Um, for scribbling, I'll use the plastic pencil almost any every time because it um, it is uh, very smooth, very kind of, I don't know, 6B pencil, graphite pencil style, I would say, and um, feels very soft. And while my outlines are always very precise and very 
uh, you know, very planned out. I want my scribbles to be more loose and I want to be able to, to scribble around and, and experiment. Uh, while as later in the outline phase or part, I need the precision. And for the cabins, I always use the Tony Montana brush, this one here, because it has a very, very good combination between uh, a natural flow and, and some, some texture, which gives it character, but it's also really precise. It's really very, very, um, yeah, it, it, it kind of is the, 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 the handling I need from my outline brushes. Uh, but I also am working on a big project right now for uh, Adidas. Can't show anything right now. I'm not allowed to, but uh, it will soon be released in, I think, in February, if I'm not wrong. And um, for example, I'm using the uh, the John Crease brush from my pack. Here you see it's a bit, it, it has a bit of wetness to it. Um, it's often really feeling of what I think is the, the best brush to use for a certain project and I felt like for this project I needed a bit of more fluid fluid look and you see the, the borders of this brush have a little bit of wetness to it it even like has a very very slight probably watery feeling but really very very slightly um, so and I'm usually going just with my, with my, my feeling and uh, as the cabins project is such a huge project and I'm having uh, an immense amount of illustrations I'm doing here. I want to work with a brush for the outlines that I feel extremely comfortable using. That, I, that That is a brush that I could probably only use at all for everything I do. And that's the Tony Montana brush from, from the brush bag. And that's kind of a natural decision to go with that one. So I don't feel kind of halfway through, I don't feel bored or annoyed by this brush. <laughs> so, so that's that's the decision making there. Um, yeah. So, um, as you see here, I put the the rough scribble. So this one here is from the sketchbook, uh, and I put it in here, and I'm just kind of drawing along these this and and add some details here and there because the very rough scribble isn't enough for me. Like it doesn't contain enough information for me to to um, start with the clean outlines. So I need to make another um, another scribble before I do the outlines. But this is just me. It's I th Sometimes it feels actually a bit stupid because it takes so much more time for me to work like this instead of just going with the outlines and, and trying to, to figure them out on the go. But yeah, it's... it's um, what I feel most comfortable with. I wouldn't probably, I wouldn't suggest this way of drawing to, to everyone <laughs> because it takes more patience, even though I'm quite fast, usually. Lori, cheers, man. Uh, I'm doing well. How about you? Hope you have a good start to the new year. So, and as you see, for example, here the roof, I'm just drawing in some example the, the example look of how I how, how large I want the tiles to be and everything. Same here with um, with the thickness of the pieces um, between the glass, uh, like the separators of the glass windows. I'm just drawing in some examples like here, and that's it. I don't need to to draw this all here in here because um, I just need to to know how I want it to look, and then the rest I can just imagine. By the way, I have an issue with my iPad. I don't know if you guys, if you're using an iPad in Procreate for drawing. Uh, let me know if you have the same issue. It's weird. You know, when you draw a line and you hold down the the, the, the brush, you do a straight line like this. And when I have it plugged in to the, um, to the loader, when I have the loader plugged in, it, it doesn't work all the time. For example, I was trying to do that here. You see here, I'm drawing the line. I hold, I'm hold, i holding it down, holding it down, holding it down. Now it works and now it just slips. And it's it happens only when I'm loading it. And it's weird as fuck. I don't know why. 
why this is um i thought about like like the temperature of the ipad because the temperature is of course going up when it's loading because um yeah well that's what it do does it, it generates some some little heat and i was thinking if the heat changes the sensitivity of the touchpad in some way i don't know it's it's really um it's really super weird yeah so uh you know or if you experience that yourself please let me know because i would really love to or i would i would like to know if if that's something uh, only i have or if it's a known bug or something i just hope my ipad isn't uh, some kind of broken or so i mean it's it's okay because it's just really only the the um when it's when it's loading and it's not that, that that bad all the time you see here this area is where it works better i think uh, now it's okay of course yeah well weird antonio cheers man glad you're enjoying it manga cast have a few layers of sketches yeah um, that's right. That's right. I wouldn't. Um, I think I'm definitely far away from being a mangaka because um, I. I think they are. Uh, their skill is is amazing in terms of drawing a consistent, like drawing characters consistently and stuff like that. And, and in the sheer mass of illustrations and, and panels they have to do, uh, that's that's for example my when I'm being asked if I want to release a comic at some point or or a graphic novel, my answer is usually I, I'm not going to do that because I just don't have the consistency of, of drawing characters and making them recognizable all the time. But it's, um, of course, I saw documentaries and stuff about um, manga artists and it's crazy that they still, even though they they have this huge output. They still do lots of iterations and lots of sketches. And you would imagine that they are just putting the, like without any kind of preparation, they're putting the final, the clean lines down, but that's um, not the case for at least many of them. I don't know if, I guess some work differently, but yeah. When I draw these sh shapes here, it always helps to make some markers because we're in isometry, we don't have a perspective. So, and for example, when I want to know the middle between these two here, I'm kind of having an imaginary box in my mind and I'm taking the middle, which is here, taking this point here, and then I can can make out the, uh, the middle because it's not always easy to, because the eye tr tends to trick you very much um, when you're drawing non-straight objects uh, because isometry your, your eye always wants to see your perspective when there is none and in this in this way of drawing and um, same here for example for the roof it's really helpful to take this distance here as your base then you have a grid here one two three four five six and a bit so you have three and a even the last bit, one, two, th three, there. Here's the middle, so you know here's the middle and you can can kind of draw the roof there. Um, it's a nice trick, because it's really, really hard to eyeball this. Uh, there's no shame in drawing little helpers. Um, Matt, the inspiration for the house is, um, you can just uh, scroll back the timeline of this video and come back to live later on. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Uh, it's, um, so it started out by me wanting to, wanting to draw tangerine trees because I like the looks of tangerine trees and um, I found uh, modern made house that uses like ancient Chinese buildings um, 
And that was just the idea to, to take this as inspiration for, for uh, this piece here, to take a couple elements from this, from the modern house and mix it with, with uh, Chinese architecture. Because so far I have Japanese cabins, like Japanese looking cabins, for example, let me just quickly show you. Um, I have, let's see, let's see. Look, this is kind of Indonesian, I think. Um, yeah, I think so. So uh, like the Wat architecture. Um, then I have here the, the Japanese temple and also the Japanese kind of suburban or city city house style. And um, I think that's it. And now I wanted to do something that is a bit more Chinese, at least like resembling a couple of elements. For example, I want to, to make these lampions in here. I don't know if lampions is the right word. It's, it's the German word. I'm just pronouncing it in English. <laughs> Like these these light light things. <laughs> no no yeah tangerines are great I love them but I don't eat them in in masses like some other people do at least I mean here in Germany it's really through the Christmas season some people uh, including for example my mother by the way uh, are eating tangerines like dozens of them a day it's crazy but um i'm not doing that but sometimes here and there one or two that's fine am i a bit dark i think my video is a bit dark right probably i should ah. Hello? Ah. probably i should more ISO. Oh, that looks better. Okay. Oh, that's better. <clears throat> yeah, and the goal is to let the trees kind of grow out of um, the the windows and and uh, doors and everywhere. That's something I'm, I like to do every now and then on the cabins. For example, um, here the the figs growing out of this ca little castle. Same. Um, let's see. Let's see. I think I, ah, this one, of course, here. So this is something that happens every now and then in my cabins. That. Something is growing out of uh, openings in a house. And I just kind of love the connection between architectural, artificial elements combined with um, natural shapes like, like trees, bushes, roots and stuff like that, mushrooms. I think that, that makes always makes a nice contrast and makes makes things look or gives tension to to compositions and stuff like that. So I'm going to add uh, another one of these balconies here, although it will be mostly hidden, I think, because I will put a tree over this, but uh, still. If you have any other questions about the project in general or what I'm doing here, um, feel free to ask anytime. It's always better for me to to explain and talk. 
instead of sitting here in silence. I mean, I have the music, but that's just some background music. That's not, it's not so special. What's that uh, emoji cereal? <laughs> Is that a shoulder rock? Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know any questions. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do. I do use the drawing assist. Um, not right now, but uh, for for example, for this line here, it's very helpful to use it. It's it's really absolutely making my workflow easier for the basic, for the larger shapes, I would say. So for the walls or for these parts here, um, it helps a lot. For me, it's important to mix the usage of the, 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 the drawing grid with free drawing because it makes, if you use it too much, it makes the drawing look a bit stale and not not natural but very very sterile and it's uh for me i found a nice way to use it for the basic shapes and then go over to hand drawn stuff uh, but for example like when i draw circles it's really helpful because um you have this for example this grid here and you pick the points to draw the circle and Procreate helps you to, to make this look like this. If, if it wasn't for the drawing support, it would be an absolute pain to draw um, circles or round, round objects like that. It'd be, it would really suck and be very annoying. So I'm just thinking... I think I'm going to... Uh, oh, wrong layer. No. I'm just, just thinking what to put here. If there's a window or multiple windows. Just gonna have a look at the reference, what they did there. that doesn't really help. <laughs> uh, 3D sculpt a 3D sculpt of a shroom head. Oh, that's a good idea. Well, I'm I'm absolutely no 3D guy, unfortunately. I would like to I, I would like to learn a bit of 3D to be honest. But to make a sculpt, I would really have to learn a lot, I guess, because Especially for characters, I think it's not not, not, not easily done. Um, so yeah, some training would be needed. <laughs> but yeah, sure, it would be nice. It would also be nice to have, for example, to have a um, little action figurine of a shroom head. It would be great. I think that's uh, that's some potential the project definitely has because uh, you can do so much cool stuff with the with the characters. So you can make 
a graphic novel out of them. You can, but you can also turn them into an action figure or whatever. Mahlzeit, räudiger Hund. <lacht> Lange nicht gesehen. Um, colors, yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, if, as these are tangerine trees coming in there, um, obviously something orange would make sense, right? Uh, I also thought about making, giving this a more kind of dusk, dusky, <laughs> is that a word, dusky? Uh, some kind of blue hour light probably um, to make the, the windows glow real nice, at least slightly, we'll see. And yeah, orange is, is very a very obvious choice because you should be able to see that it's it's tangerines and not apples or blueberries <laughs> on the trees. So that would be good. That would be good. Uh, apart from that, now I'm. I guess I will just let it come to me when it's time to color. Actually, so uh, that's what I that's what I usually do. And. But yeah, sure. I'm, I put some thoughts into into the aspect of what colors I could add to to uh, to an orange tone here. So there's a nice natural stone wall over here. That's always great because you see, like we have the very straight shapes here. We have very straight shapes in this area here. And then we have the, the stone wall that breaks up the, the shape here very much. So it, it, it's a really nice contrast that I love at this, in this part. I think I'm probably going to add a door here because I mean, the door could be on the other side of the, of the house. It's always good to give people an impression of, of how a human would use this building it's funniest thing is always when i post the, the cabins to reddit for example it's uh it's crazy reddit people are kind of really nitpickers i love it but it's sometimes a bit annoying but i usually i love it um the reddit community is, is really funny because all the time people come up and tell you what doesn't work or what doesn't really make sense in your house so for the most fantastical buildings you're drawing that are which are obviously never going to exist in, in, in real life I mean uh, that's uh, what's appropriate come on I mean for example take this here the last one I finished uh, obviously this house doesn't exist and nobody would, would build a house that would have water flowing down like this from the roof and everything if I would post this to Reddit, I guarantee you people would come up with like it's impossible that the water pressure is so high that it would flow out of the window at this velocity on the first level and <laughs> stuff like that. It's really, it's really kind of funny. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, but there's a nice aspect to it because you start thinking about, yeah, well, how would it? How would someone really live there and how would someone use a house and um, that starts by adding a door somewhere so to give people the information hey this is an entrance to this building even though there's no people in it anytime there won't be any people ever in any curious cabins because the the cabin is the character but yeah so far yippee hey man how's it going Hope you're having a good good start to the weekend. You're busy making your daily renders. <laughs> yeah, you heard 3D. I, uh, I'm actually working like whenever I have time, which isn't that often quite uh, right now, but I will very much focus on that in the ne next hour, um, in the next uh, weeks is my first nifty drop. And uh, I wanted to, I really wanted to learn 3D for that drop to build some models as a reference for, for the pieces I'm doing there. It's also an isometric project that will will have really funny isometric animations, but yeah, it's 
the drop is in February and I can't can't learn Blender until then, unfortunately. Even though I already have a teacher who accepted to train me, but <laughs> yeah, it's annoying. I will, um, I think I will post the first scribbles of this project, so I'm, I'm, I finish with the scribbles for the three artworks. And I think I will, I will post these to Patreon tomorrow, maybe. So there will be some first impression on what I'm, I'm planning there. And then, yeah, I'll post the progress on these bit by bit. Um, as for uh, uh, Quintin, Quintine, is that right? Quintine, yeah. That sounds Dutch. <laughs> Um, which colors fit well in the color palette? Yeah, that's usually I'm starting with with the base color, and in this case, this could could very well be orange. And I'm thinking, what would create a nice contrast with orange if I want to have a striking contrast or a strong and in the contrast with with a lot of tension. Or I, I try to, for example, when I when I want to go with something more calm and more limited, uh, that's quite easy actually because I just go to the color circle and let's let's say I have this orange here. Um, I know that if I use yellow or red tones, um, I will have a more um, a more calm and more um, yeah, I'm missing the word. Not monochrome. Uh, yeah, well, you know what I mean. I mean, it's it's um, it's really about what you want to achieve with the palette. But if I start with an orange, for example, I would for this one, let's say I have the orange for for the the tangerine trees, and then I think, okay, do I do I make the trees green? And I pick it green like this. You see, this is kind of almost a complementary contrast. Uh, which creates a lot of tension here. For me personally, this is too much tension because it will re re really stick out then this contrast. So I'm not going with the, with the green for the trees, for the leaves, even though it would be realistic, but I'm trying to probably go for for something closer to this orange, like a like more yellow um, color for the leaves. And that's how you approach um, the palette. Personally, as you know, I mean, I'm, I'm working a lot with purple, so I'm trying to. That also answers your question, uh, Matt. So if I if I take this purple, um, I'm going to more fantasy direction because leaves of the tree are not purple, obviously. But it also we have a contrast that is in this area here. Um, that is a strong contrast, but it's far away from from the the biting contrast between orange. And green or I decide to 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 make the leaves green like this but then I would try to probably make the, the tangerines more like this in this area this looks a bit muddy this is really dirty probably a little bit more try to find the sweet spot here you see this one is is even much has even much more harmony than, than this, if you compare these two and these two. So yeah, that's step by step and just trying out. The good thing is with these outline illustrations I'm doing, uh, you can easily just try and fill fill a area. For example, I fill the, wa the wall here with a certain color and then I fill the tree that is la later here with a different color and I see how it w it's working and I can just change it on the go, how I want it. Modular Motel, hello, hello. Drawings up, how about you? <laughs> yeah, Jakob, I will, I will let you know. I, I, have a, I have someone who wants to train me in Blender, but yeah, as I said, uh, it's just about me missing the time. Uh, 
series you changed to uh, the Twitch. Was YouTube not not working well for you, or why did you do that? <laughs> so I'm, I'm right now. Yeah, I'm streaming simultaneously. Um, and uh, oh, <laughs> that's you. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you usually on Twitch, right? Um, so I, to be honest, I'm a bit done with Twitch because it's not my way of streaming and they had a couple of decisions in the last year that, I don't know, I don't feel really comfortable with Twitch anymore, to be honest. I'm still streaming there because I know a lot of you guys like to, to watch there. I see that it's getting more and more to YouTube. Right now it's, I just had a look, right now it's 50-50 almost. And it's still totally fine for me to, to stream to Twitch, but I'm, I don't want to be, I don't want to make this this whole interaction stuff anymore. This whole like points and events and weird extras and overlays and whatever. I would just want to make my art here and want people to watch my art and have this more like a t tutorial than an entertainment show, you know. And that's that's um, that's not the only reason. Um, Twitch also changed the. Uh, subscription model a lot and uh, right now it's like I mean Twitch is Amazon Amazon is taking such a bit big chunk of the subscriptions and I didn't didn't want to have people spending money or me like to, to support me and half of it go to Amazon I'm sorry definitely not okay for me so uh, I want people who want to support me financially go to patreon become a patron and get really lots of cool things back in, in return um, but yeah and that's that's also a reason and I also want to push my YouTube channel more um, it's cool that the videos here after I finish streaming can be viewed very easily as regular YouTube videos and I see I see that a lot of people do that uh, with some of the streams at least and yeah stuff like that it's is, is has led to the decision to um, to focus on YouTube more, but I'm still going to stream to, to, to Twitch. So if you're watching on Twitch right now, um, don't be concerned. Um, or yeah, there's no reason for me to believe that I'm going to leave Twitch for good. It's just that I will focus on YouTube um, more and, and just will stream simultaneously. It's cool that it's it's possible at least. I mean. Um, yeah, it's uh, I'm using Restream. It's called uh, like Restream. Uh, it's a service that allows me to stream to both. So you're kind of getting a stream key on their platform, and you can connect OBS. So I'm using OBS for streaming, and um, it's really working very well. Um, and, and as you see, I added the chat on the left side, um, as you see here. Uh, there <laughs> and uh, so everyone can read everyone's messages as you see some of the messages there's, there's a little icon some of them come coming from YouTube some from Twitch and uh, I think that's a good way of dealing with it because that was my, my biggest concern that we can have still a chat with a whole group of watchers and um, yeah of course some things are not working really ide ideally for example the, the twitch points that's why i get got rid of these um because that's something that doesn't really work with streaming over restream but i think that's fine as i want to focus on making art on stream and talk about my art on stream anyway that's okay so i have uh I have to look all the leaves of the tangerine trees. I mean, they're very, very narrow and pointy. And the question is how to turn these into my drawing style, because of course I'm not drawing all the little leaves. Uh, so all the single leaves. And I have to see what works best kind of simulating this this 
these leaves with my style because usually my trees always look like this <laughs> and that's I think that's not the right way to do it in this case here maybe something like that but I have to do that with a the right brush afterwards anyway so I'm just going to do this very very roughly now add a couple of tangerines they're giant tangerines by the way they're mutant ones <laughs> Yeah, everyone is done with Twitch, right? It's crazy. Uh, so last year when I decided to mm, mostly move over to YouTube, I, I watched a couple of videos on YouTube by streamers who were totally fed up with Twitch. And I even made this decision quite early and then more and more facts came out and more and more decisions Twitch made. And I was like, oh man, I just um, I'm just happy to I've made this decision already, so I don't have to deal with it now because I'm, I'm, I'm I have made up my mind about it. Um, yeah. Hmm. And about the Twitch coins, yeah, I know some of you guys were saving these up for redeeming them for for kind of crazy stuff. Um, and I feel a bit sorry about that. If you're a kind of a plastic gold millionaire, <laughs> that's what they they were called, the plastic gold. Uh, you can really reach out to me and I, I'll send you a pack of stickers or or a postcard pack or something like that because I feel a bit sorry uh, about that and I will definitely make up for it, promised. Yeah, Antonio, I think the, the difference, the main difference on Twitch is that people really want to be entertained a lot there so you have to come up with ideas to to be entertaining and um, I'm not a big fan of this fact because I'm, I'm, not, I'm a fan of, of people doing it the right way I'm, I love watching these streams myself but for making my art it was too distracting from for my for my core message and for my core mean from the core meaning of what I do uh, live, which is um, showing you my art process, talking about art, etc. Um, so yeah, that was for me when I realized that that was the decision was clear. And on YouTube, it's it's more about tutorials. Um, it's more about the content of like l l learning content and stuff like that. Um, yeah, of course I didn't want to leave Twitch behind completely. That's why I'm really happy about this solution uh, with Restream now. But uh, we'll see what the future brings. And on Twitch, I feel like if you're not streaming at least twice a week, or three times a week very regularly with a tight schedule and I had this schedule in the beginning uh, I think it was that Wednesdays and Fridays but I realized with my way of being a freelancer and having my my client projects having a very loose schedule every every day and every week it was difficult for me to commit to the schedule of st streaming two times per week. I f um, the first month were okay. There was the there was also the really lockdown COVID month, so it was easy to stay home and just just draw and just stream. But after a while, I felt um, an annoying pressure coming up. And when I was sitting there, like, oh, it's Wednesday again. I have to stream today. I don't want to let let down the people that are waiting for the stream. And I realized that, that this just wasn't for me. I had a project, so it, it stressed me out because I had to finish it, um, until the deadline and I just didn't have the time to stream. And I could ask every, everyone and everyone was saying, yeah, it's of course it's fine to, to skip a stream. But in the end, it's really kind of making a difference if you're someone who just is online every now and then, or if you, if you have a 
schedule and people know that you will be online at a certain um a certain time you know and yeah uh i think on twitch it's really important to to have this schedule and if it's for you and if you can commit to it it's totally fine i mean most most uh, successful streamers do that but um it's not working for me <clears throat> yeah, it's quite the culture, that's right. Although I miss uh, the the good old um, drawing drink drawing drink streams Friday nights. That was really a cool time, and with with lots of people tuning in almost every time, and you had like the, your your audience there. That was very very loyal and getting in touch with so so I, I never never been able to get in touch this intensely with any followers for example and that's um that's a great aspect to it i definitely recommend to just try it and see where it goes people totally dig it um you can always think about next next steps or how to what to what to make of this. Um, but yeah, I think to to get some valuable information on that, you have to stream for at least a couple of months to see how it goes because building up the audience also takes time. Uh, it even takes time if you have lots of followers on Instagram or Twitter or wherever because converting these followers isn't that easy it, it always you always think like for example with my youtube um my goal was to reach a thousand followers last year so until the end of the year i made it in the end very very closely i made it but i i started with this goal around april or may or so and i was like hey i have uh, i don't know 60 70 000 followers on instagram if at least uh, I mean, it, it should be easy to make at least a thousand of these come over to YouTube, but it's not happening. It's really not not that easy. Um, so converting these is uh, is hard work. You have to. You have to. You don't don't sh should not rely to, uh, on 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 that happening um, instantly. But yeah, I, I, I was just thinking today what my next goal should be, like how many followers I want to have at the end of 2023. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, it's hard to predict. I mean, I have the goal to, to invest more time into YouTube, um, but I can't say if, if that will work out. I have a really huge pile of video ideas um, in my back that I will wonder if the other produce probably but it's, uh, I don't know if it will be another thousand I, I hope it will be a couple more to be honest um, but I don't know if, if I can realistically reach 5,000 or so I don't know how fast this goes sometimes it's just it just needs the one really nice short <laughs> and you hear there <laughs> but uh so far none of my shorts went viral so i didn't figure out so far um or i didn't, didn't figure out yet how that works <laughs> even though people keep to tell me they're confused how my shorts didn't blow up but there's certainly a reason for that <laughs> oh 500k followers in 80 months man that's um that would be that would be crazy. I mean, that would be a good reason for me to finally kick Instagram's butt for good and <laughs> completely move to YouTube, right? Uh, something that I, that I would love to do, honestly. Uh, 
lately I've after um, not now after my account is back and it seems to be back now really back because um, uh, didn't get didn't get banned uh, again. Uh, I, th I thought like I had some fun using Instagram again. It's kind of yeah, it's also in a little bit of a, an addiction. But uh, to be honest, uh, I still think that it's a dying platform, and I wouldn't I wouldn't mind moving over to YouTube completely if I had five hundred thousand followers by the end of the year. <laughs> but that's highly unrealistic. I think I would uh, I would need to. Like to come anywhere close to, and with close, I mean in a, in a five digit area, I would probably have to invest so much time into this. Yeah, no platform wants to convert. Uh, that's, that's, of course, I mean, that's. Um, the platforms want that all to happen for themselves and not in the opposite direction. Totally clear. Yeah, yeah. It's always with these pushbacks. It's it's kind of interesting. Um, they try something really crazy, then people are extremely offended by it, and there's there's a pushback happening, protests happening. But it's always, I think, for them, it's always pushing the line. You know, pushing the line of, what, of what's doable. Half a year ago, it was probably not thinkable to, I don't know. Um, I don't have an example right now for Twitter, but you know what I mean. It's it's always about um, pushing the boundaries of what of what they can do without people going completely crazy. And now everyone's happy that that you're allowed to use Linktree again. I mean, what the fuck? You're allowed to use Linktree in your bio again. Thank you very much. Wow, <laughs> it's 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 crazy. So last year with social media, it was really about like what what. Could they, what shit could they pull without people leaving in masses? And I think Twitter people actually already left in masses. I I feel like I all already see lots of engagement going back on my account. I don't know because um, I have lots of followers, but um, but they are not anymore. Or there are not so much, so 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 many active ones anymore, and um, I think it's just about trying. Like, what what can we do without people leaving leaving in masses? And uh, that's uh, crazy. Same with Instagram, of course. And I don't see. You know, the, the problem is. Let's take Instagram. Um, everyone hates on Instagram. I want to not do this so much anymore because this negativity is, is annoying me uh, personally. And I want to, to step back from always complaining about this uh, in the future. But, but well, sometimes it's not that easy. Um, with Instagram, it's like people are complaining. People want to leave. People look for alternatives. But I don't see them really using lots of alternatives when I look at my reach I still have by far the best reach on Instagram I, 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 there's no way around me using Instagram as long as I have access to my account of course um, there's there's just no no way of um, 
not not using it for me because it was what cut my reach so significantly that I really don't know like how to reach out to people with with my news anymore, etc. Even though I have a newsletter, even though I have a Discord, uh, YouTube, whatever, um, I feel kind of naked on reach when when my Instagram is gone because people are in the end they are not really kind kind of massively going somewhere else right now. Um, I, I think it will happen at some point. But the, the new place, the, the, the competitor, whatever, isn't there any, uh, yet. So all we can do is just... Just join the horde and <laughs> keep using it. So what, I, what do I put here in, the, in this nice winter garden? Yeah, Twitter is Twitter is the same. Um, of course, um, there's Mastodon. I, I'm using it from time to time. It's nice, but it's not the same. Elizabeth, that's that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I, I know that there's always people. I mean, for for example, on Patreon, I know that not a really huge amount of people reads my Patreon posts. But I also know that some of you guys um, and some more are enjoying it and enjoying them, and that's that feels good and it's it's great that um, like it's great enough for me to, to keep doing it because it's um, motivating still. Uh, and I've been always saying that a couple like a handful of good fans and followers and a small but engaged community is better than hundreds of thousands of of zombies <laughs> so yeah I'm not sure what to put in that winter garden maybe I will decide later I mean I could put some living living some slice of life in there, a table and um, and a carpet and some some images on the wall or so. Uh, Jean, yeah, that's um, I mean, starting new is not is not needed right now because I have my account back. And I hope it will stay for good. The thing is, the way I got it back in the end was that I that a client of mine, that I have a friendly friendly rela relationship to, um, was able to connect me to someone working at Meta, and they are they were giving me my account back. Uh, and I even hired a lawyer <laughs> because I mean there's a certain worth to to an account with this amount of followers and this history and all my kind of I mean there's Instagram is the place on the internet with probably the where I have probably the biggest history of my my work right and um, in the end it worked so yeah but that would be would have been the alternative of course starting a new account but imagine how shitty it feels to to abandon an account you invested three years of, of work in uh, especially in the first two years, I invested really lots of work into my Instagram account. Giving that away for good would have, would have felt massively crappy. <laughs> that would would have been such a downer. Um, so yeah, that would, would have been the like starting a new account would have been the emergency route probably, but. a very depressing one as well so I think I'm good with the, the scribble so far I will see later what I do with this this room here but I'm happy with the composition let's quickly mirror it some of the trees sometimes have a little direction with the leaves you know they kind of point point in, to this axis somehow 
And that's stuff you, you suddenly see when you mirror your, your canvas. Um, I think that's because I, I hold my pen in a certain way when I'm drawing these. So I have to pay attention to that later on. It's not so important right now, but later with the clean drawing, I should pay attention to it. That they look like they're, looks like there's a little bit of wind and they're all kind of blowing, they're blowing this, this direction. Um, that's always the magic of mirroring the canvas. Okay, yeah, I think that's that's nice. And I can go over to the outlines. Uh, Simon, that's a good question. Um, although the, the very quick answer is that I do not illustrate without lines. Uh, I sometimes very, very rarely do that in Illustrator. But I'm not sure if I ever have done any illustration without uh, outlines in Procreate, to be honest, because that's just my style and I know that people know, my, know, me, know me for this visual style. And, yeah, <laughs> but it's it's a good question. I think I would, yeah, I guess I would have a different process because especially on the shading and uh, the coloring, it would be hard to to move like this, I guess. So, for the outlines, by the way, I'm, uh, this is a cool feature here in Procreate that ha they have added not so long ago where you're here on the left, um, where you can save the size of your brush. And I have a preset size, which is this one here, for the cabins. <laughs> so I'm always using this size. So all the outlines for the cabins look um, not the same in terms of thickness. Very, very helpful. So, and for example, for these parts here, I'm using the grid support, so I can really just draw along the grids. Um, helps a lot with like being faster and later on I can add more hand-drawn elements that are that have an organic feel to it and something I'll also do feels like cheating sometimes but I don't mind is oops is duplicating this I think they're a bit. Oops, they are a bit thick here, so I'm going to change this a little. Um, so I'm just copy and pasting recurring elements here and there. Makes my life much easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a little bit cheating, but it's okay. So it also it also helps maintaining the same space between these. Um, so far, there's unfortunately no function to automatically align the the space, like for example in. Illustrator or Photoshop, but uh, it's still very helpful. So let's have a look. This looks super sterile now. It really looks doesn't look so much handmade, but it, this will clear out later when I'll add more hand drawn elements. This is the funny thing about um, using this technique. You don't really see that it's copy and paste in the end, or you add some some little imperfections to th these. For example, here, you were going like this. No, uh, here you, you're doing a little bit of this, and it looks, um, looks doesn't look copy paste in the end. The little tricks. Evangelos, uh, yeah, you're very, very welcome. Thanks for watching. Uh, glad you're enjoying it. 
always good feedback, so I know that it's uh, interesting and you're learning something. And I'm not showing complete crap here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, AI art. AI art can also be a form of cheating, I guess. Um, I can say that I'm no enemy of AI art. I respect it, like I expect the existence of it. Um, I can see why people are upset about it, but I think it's a natural going of technology, and um, I think. I see some artists concentrating on hating it a bit too much instead of focusing on their profession because I'm a strong believer that if you are an artist who is uh, um, oh this sorry this I want this to look a bit different here if you if you have confidence in your skills and if you are not only someone who draws commission after like a pre-made plan and or, or exactly how the client tells you etc if you have if you use your brain for your work um, you'll always have something that the the artificial intelligence doesn't have you can consult you can come up with concepts that are unique and new um, the AI can or will be able in a couple of years to do this all, all as well, but to a certain point, in my opinion. And um, people will want to work with humans in the future still. There are a couple of jobs in, in the creative industry that will be that will disappear, though. That's uh, something that is, of course, not not nice, but I mean, we all expected, for example, machinery jobs or like, for example, car builders or whatever to disappear in a couple of years. And now we're kind of shocked that the creative jobs are in danger of going away from the AI. And I think that's, I sometimes feel that's a bit arrogant because we're, I feel like the, the artist communities has, would have been okay with a worker at a car manufacturer losing their job. But now that the, 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 the jobs of being an artist or, for example, jobs in editorial art will probably disappear, everyone's so upset and that's, um, I don't know. Uh, another thing, of course, to discuss is the whole, yeah, the, the whole complex area of if the AI steals from other artists. Um, that's a difficult discussion, I think. Um, I do think that it's difficult or that it's not optimal if AI, for example, emulates certain artists to, to make the same of what the artist does um, without paying the artist, you know, that's, that's certainly difficult and that, that shouldn't, shouldn't happen. For example, um, if someone wants to hire an artist and the artist is too expensive, that someone goes to an AI and just recreates work in this particular artist's style, that's kind of scammy, I think. So I think we need to find solutions for that, for sure. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of these things, but yeah. Apart from that, it's 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 un inevitable that this will all happen, and um, yeah, I know that it, it also can be really challenging for probably art students. So if I was in my first semester at art school right now, like back then, if I remember me back in the days, um, yeah, difficult. I would have been probably a bit disillusioned being in my first semester learning illustrations and someone can make a fantastic illustration that looks much better that, that, than what I can do or what that what I could do at that stage. 
uh, in within 20 seconds or so. Yeah, that's. Um, I definitely don't, don't don't envy beginners right now, but I would still stick to your craft, develop your craft, but also develop your ability to be a, to be um, a consultant in arts. You know, because clients come to me and say, hey. We love your style, we love your work, we have a product here. What do you think is a way to convey our message, to convey our product? What's, what, what kind of concept can you come up with? They, they're not asking me to just draw. If, for example, Adidas is not coming to me to, and they're not saying like, can you please draw a picture of this shoe? They're coming to me and saying like, we have a product here, a project, and we want art for it. Can you come up with an idea for for making images for this product? And um, yeah, in the future probably they go they'll go to to someone they hire who comes up with with prompts, who knows? But they'll I think they'll still come up or they still come to someone who makes illustrations as well. Honey pepper, thanks very much. I'm glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> Sorry for the bit long um, excursion to to AI. I think it's uh, yeah. I know it's a very very hot topic right now. Um, I personally pre prefer to not discuss this with too much salt and too much anger and and too ma many emotions because I think a rational discussion is always leading to the best. Um, like understanding and to the best communication between people and um, I see many many people and also many artists especially raging about this and I see their points but it's not leading somewhere it's not helping anyone it, it also gives you a very very bad mood that's good Oh and yeah, New Year's resolutions. Um, that that's a good that's a good point. While well, I was just talking about not raging too much, so as I mentioned before, I think my only resolution is probably not to be angry about social media that much anymore. So not taking this so per personal anymore, you know, because I I felt like I took bad performance, like an image of mine that I put hours of work in. Um, I think I sometimes put it too personal, I took it too personal when it didn't perform and I was like concerned about people not liking the work, etc. Uh, so I want to stop complaining about that and focus on positive things like my art, making art, talking about art more. But I will still, um, I will still have this as a topic. I will do a YouTube video about Instagram as well soon. Uh, funnily, or funny thing is that I already had a concept for a video uh, when Instagram banned my account three times in a row in a couple of weeks. Um, so, and then I wasn't wasn't sure about making this video anymore. And I asked on Instagram if if I should post it, and a really huge number of people were asking me to please. Um, make this video so I will do it I will still talk about it but in a more positive way I think yeah I, I is spicy spicy as fuck <laughs> something if I may add something else to this topic something I read a lot right now is artists talking about the process and it's yeah it's a good 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 point right now because I'm sitting here in the middle of the process of this artwork and something I hear and read a lot is uh, that the process is important and that, that um, AI skips this process and that this is the worst thing because um, the craft and everything is is a thing that, that is part of making art. And I think, yes, that is totally right, but it's also super personal part of making art. My process is my thing. I'm sharing it with you and you enjoy watching it, hopefully, but it's still my personal process and the result is the result. And people, I mean, 
there is a couple, like a handful of people watching these streams here and a couple of thousand seeing this artwork once it's done, most likely. And most of these people do not really care about the process and rightfully so, because they are there to enjoy the art. As same thing as going to a museum and watching like old masters paintings, watching, watching a Vermeer or a Rembrandt painting, we are not really super, super interested in the process, even though the process was incredibly important. Even, I mean, with the old Renaissance, Renaissance painters took, took years to finish. And that's the same with, for example, a client you may have um, when working on a commission. They appreci may appreciate the process. They, they may even want to watch it and learn about it. But for example, for an ed editorial piece you're making that is displayed in a newspaper, it's an image that people look at and that's it. And they enjoy it, hopefully, that's cool. But it's not about the process. And nobody knows how long you worked on the piece or whatever. Um, and I, I'm missing in this whole discussion, I'm missing people looking at the, this fact of if you do art for yourself, the process is probably the most important thing. You do art for a client, as a commission, whatever. The most important thing is the result. It is a bit frustrating, I know. It may sound a little bit, uh, a little bit cynic or so, but it isn't actually because it's like you don't. Also, you don't go to a car manufacturer and. You don't you don't take a look at them building the car. You want to you want a car that works in 99% cases if you're not a car nerd probably. You want a car that works and drives and does what it's there for and the same is what people expect from art. I'm getting a lot of um <laughs> I know I'm getting a lot of uh hate for for this point of view but that's how I see it personally and it's not for me definitely not um, ignoring the hard work behind behind art because it has, still has to be done to to achieve the result but yeah and I think people tend to lose the focus in this discussion a little bit you have a different opinion on that let me know it's uh, always always glad about any kind of discussion as long as it's constructive and 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 rational but uh, yeah that's the, this thought came up for me in the last weeks when i saw the discussions about ai art Similar to drawing these lines, by the way, it's not me drawing these lines, it's kind of partly Procreate as well, and Procreate's function to make this line look straight, because I'm <laughs> I'm not good enough to draw this line that straight without any help. <laughs> so there's no AI involved, of course, but it's also a tool, you know? I remember being totally fucked up about Photoshop, not having such a function when I still used Photoshop um, for my drawings. And they said they're wanting to draw a clean looking 
slightly bent line and it was a pain. Oh, that's a really good question, Elizabeth. Um, I, I didn't do anything um, traditional for a really long while. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I have to. Um, probably I wasn't at a f uh, art festival in Dresden. Uh, in. July, I think, and they had large walls, and you could just pick um, graffiti like spray cans and big markers and just draw something on there. And I tried to put something on there, but it didn't look really good, <laughs> so <laughs> it was really not really decent. Um, and that was the probably the last time I tried to use traditional tools to make something. Yeah, but apart from that, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I, I think I could. Um, make something with pencil and paper. And I used to do that during, um, like in my uni, uni years, I experimented a lot with watercolors back then. And, um, I think I still could make something decent, but. I'm not really interested in doing that because I love my digital tools so much. Also all the dirt and the old paper and the paint everywhere <laughs> it was so I, I mean i'm not a total fanatic of, of of a clean home or a clean office etc but uh having all the tools lying around etc was sometimes annoying as well So as you see here, it's 
again a little bit. Copy paste. Copy paste process. Because these um, slightly bent lines are often challenging to draw. Uh, and it takes really, for me at least, it takes a while to make these look even and to make it look good. So I'm taking this little shortcut here. Oh, didn't have some spam for a while. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's um, something you you ask yourself from time to time, I guess. Um, yeah. Got I, yeah. By the way, I'm I'm a adult dating influencer now. <laughs> um, no, the, the style thing is really that's really interesting. So I'm, I'm I, I think or I believe that. The style is never finished or complete. So if you compare my work of this or last year to one or two years ago, there's always differences, even though the differences or the steps, I think, get smaller and smaller until probably only I see the differences because it's um, so marginal. But of course, you always think like, what could I do differently? in terms of both style and, but also, I guess, um, the subjects you're dealing with. Like, do I want to draw isometric houses for the next 20 years? Or um, do I want to ditch this this whole visuality for something new at some point? Um, it's possible, of course, but uh, yeah, I, I have the kind of the rule it's not a it's not really a rule but the way i think about it is probably um that i want to make something or work in a certain style as long as i love the process and people love the outcome and that is still the case but it's definitely possible that it isn't the case in in a couple of years We'll see. Um, as far as the, the technical process, I think yeah, I think I mastered it quite, quite a lot. So there's always things to improve. Sometimes I want to, for example, improve on, of, on the complexity of my animations, and I think I'm going to do that at some point. Um, there's other thing, things that I would like to to make different or better or stuff that I want to have in my illustrations that I don't right now, for example, um, more abstract elements is something that I would be interested in. Uh, yeah, but the, the process of this, what I do right here is scribbling, outlining, coloring is really I think I'm really, really, I'm quite advanced into in, in mastering this, yeah. It's, it's really, 
such a natural process for me right now. <laughs> your quiz show. <laughs> no, I, your, your questions are great. You should. Um, I, I, I'm going to invite you to to hold the quiz show regularly on my streams because um, I think it's probably some questions that others also had but couldn't articulate, or that others also had without knowing it or whatever. Because uh, it's really, it's really some great topics. And as mentioned, I'm, I'm, I always prefer answering questions on the stream. It's um, more fun. Because I'm not doing these streams only for you guys to watch, but also for me to be entertained and think about my, um, my stuff. Nice. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm a bit jealous actually because I would love to learn that as well. Uh, um, I'm sometimes watching the videos of uh, Dedus or Dedus. I don't know um, how the name is spelled correctly, but um, love the style. It's a him, right? I think he's a he. 99% sure. Um, I also reach out for to him to to make a, a curious cabin, actually, um, because I think in that style it would be perfect. But did not get a response. I mean, I have a connection to most artists somehow, at least through through mutual friend or some something similar, but. Couldn't reach out to Dedus or didn't get an answer. I mean, maybe he was just not interested. But I would have loved uh, to see a cabin in that style. But maybe you can make some um, when you're learning, after you're learning grease pencil. <laughs> Dedus. Dedus. I, I, I don't speak French. But yeah, yeah. I guess he's he's busy as fuck. That's right. Which is which is good. I always love seeing artists being busy. But I have a, a fantastic lineup for the collabs for the Kevin's collabs again. There's um, other three D people as well, uh, and there again like Steffi Fung will do something and. Um, 3D as well. Uh, let me think. Uh, I have other 3D guys in there. Good that I don't have that on my mind right now. Oh yeah, Clément, Clément Morin, or so, and also Marie. Met Met Mareka is 
doing 3D, I think that's it. Yeah. So some, I think Gamari is doing um, voxel stuff. Oh, that's she's a voxel artist. Yeah, um, I guess, of course, I mean, any kind of software that is new is is, um, is not easy to learn within a couple of days. I would still like to give it a try just to see how it works because I like to know how things function, you know, it's, it's a more also a personal interest in making an experience with that with a tool. But yeah, it's definitely hard to get me away from Procreate. Um, I had a really good time using Clip Studio Paint, gotta say. So I think, but I think the, the workflow is of course very, very similar to Procreate in the end. Um, but I was surprised how much fun I had with it when I used it for the um, for the one for the one artwork I made with it last year but yeah it also wouldn't really make sense to step away from Procreate right now from because I have <clears throat> my workflow very much defined here but you know sometimes the old dog wants to push himself and try to learn a couple of new, of new things <laughs> Uh, coming to London, um, well, it's, last time I've been to London was, I don't know, it's really long ago. Um, I don't know, but first thing I'll do is going to uh, Paris in February. And then probably New York this year as well, but it, that's not 100% not decided yet. So I'm not sure if I can do a London trip as well because I, I'm sometimes a little bit lazy when it comes to traveling. But we'll see. Some kind of, yeah, if you want to buy a print, some kind of art convention would be great, right? Okay, if you have some Blender experience, then it's uh, it's a different approach. I have none. I know a bit of Cinema 4D from yeah, just playing around with it many years ago, actually. And apart from that, I'm totally noob in any 3D software. Music sounds like a metal melody to some kind of sitcom or, I don't know, maybe even a game show or so. <laughs> old, I mean, old game show <laughs> or, uh, or a sitcom.
<laughs> MS Paint is your favorite, really? I lost my my house shoe. <laughs> Enderfiends, hey, how's it going? Schön dich zu lesen. <laughs> Hi Him Studio, is that um, 3D, someone doing 3D as well? <laughs> I don't know, that's something, the music is something from uh, Epidemic Sound, I got a subscription there because I was so annoyed by always having to look up music that I could play on the stream without the fear of getting banned. And it's, I, I just um, put on some synth pop playlist. It's uh, very random, but yeah. I don't know. I, <laughs> I wouldn't say I like it, but it's, it's, a f it's okay for a change. <laughs> At least it's uh, kind of positive. You see people jumping around in 90s or 80s clothes. This is probably the maximum of detail I want to have in these in these cabins drawings. It's really very tight lines, but it's okay. I guess it should work. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not going to dance on my streams. So that's not going to happen. Didn't do it on TikTok so, so far, and I won't do it on. Uh, on my streams as well. <laughs> oh, it's gotten dark and very... I put the ISO, I think I probably should use ISO automatic, but I hate, hate when it switches all the time. <laughs> oh, modular model, nice to see you. <laughs> <clears throat> Where's that name from, by the way? It sounds like it could be a game or something. Okay, okay. I should check out your um, your account probably. Yeah, uh, endorphins. Yeah, I'm. Uh, uh, I don't know when the last stream was, but I felt like doing one again. It's sometimes I miss streaming, and then I think, hey, I should just go live again. Um, no, I would do it more often, but uh, in the last month I had like, most of the work I did was something I wasn't able to stream because it was client work. 
and so I would have had to come up with other streamable projects and it just, I just wasn't able to do that. So, um, after doing this part here, I think I'm going to draw some trees because I want to try, I want to see how the style works for these, um, because I won't be here for so much longer, I want to do that before leaving. <laughs> making weird noises. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's great to exchange or to to be creative still, you know. Um, I guess there's lots of people who would like to be drawing or making music, any of these, but don't have the time at all. Um, but of course, I mean, in the end, it's just about finding or about prioritizing prioritizing your time but it's good that you find the time to draw instead and we are all enjoying your uh, the work as well I mean the utility ones it's really nice to see these uh, having some success I feel like I didn't change much about the drawing style uh, compared to other to other trees. <laughs> I just can't help it. It's just it's just the the Stefan trees, the Stefan way of drawing trees. Uh... Let's have another look at the tangerine tree here. I mean, it's more. I guess it's more small batches of trees Some, sometimes they're they're going like like this and then there's a big hole and then there's again probably I should make them more dynamic and less like a blob because mm. these are a bit uninspired Me something like this. It's um, drawing botanicals is yeah, for, for doing this. I always have to forget my usual way of outlining a little bit because usually I'm extremely controlled and I have very very clean and clear shapes. But for drawing trees, you sometimes have to, or at least I do. Um, yeah, I'm giving away a bit of control. I like the outcome of it, but it um, doesn't feel so natural for me. So I have to always kind of forget what I'm doing usually. Um, yeah, that's why I always need a bit of time to get in the right groove. <laughs> I think it's going in a good direction here. The giant tangerines. Oh, 
Oh, that's uh, paper by WeTransfer, this one here. Everyone's always asking about this. I wish, I uh, still wish I had an influencer um, agreement with them, but they don't do that. <laughs> I'm recommending this so often. Um, I sometimes get asked about private drawings, but not that often because um, I usually say no to these because I, I'm, you know, it's um, it's probably even fun to draw for friends and family, but I think it's as it's my profession, I don't want to mix up work and and making doing someone a favor. But for example, I um, gifted someone a drawing of their their house uh, for their wedding. So I have friends, one of my best friends is uh, has been building a house. They just finished it, by the way, last month. And I promised or I gave them as a present for the wedding that I would draw their house uh, once it's done. So it's soon time to redeem the gift, actually, because uh, I've been vis visiting their house uh, a week ago for the first time. So I could take a <laughs> could take a first look. No, that was not the reason, of course. Uh, I was um, I was just visiting and having a couple of beers. Cuba Libre. Hello, hello. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know if I, w I will stream more in 2023. We'll see. I, that's not one of my New Year's resolutions, actually. It's it's just um, that I'm now working on something personal again after doing a lot of client work, so I can show it on stream. Um, but we'll see. So my, my plan is to be more active on YouTube. To make more to make more videos so no streams but real YouTube videos um, maybe this will also result in streaming more often I'm not sure yet so I like how the how the trees look it's very detailed it takes a lot of time. But that's not a problem, it's okay. And well, yeah, there's a lot of them to draw, right? So that's the task I have here. Terrible client, yeah, sure, I had, uh, definitely, it doesn't, it happens over time, I mean, I'm freelancing for more than 10 years now, and it, um, it just happens that you have a terrible, terrible client, it's, pe usually it's just clients who hire you, like, the most terrible ones are the ones who, who, start negotiating your price without even like they want to they want something from you and they wanted to, they wanted to do it cheap if it happens now that someone is really kind of negotiating in a way that i don't like i'm uh, i'm in the in the good position to to decline a project then so i usually just take it down um, like put the, the offer down to, to work for someone. Um, it's of course a privileged position for sure to be able to do that. But uh, funny thing is that those who are starting to with, with bad way of negotiating or 
people or clients who start with demanding something before they even gave you anything, stuff like that. So if you have this this feeling about, about a client from the very start, it's very, very often that exactly the same people are the ones who kind of try to press as much work out of you as they can, who are not behaving in a, in a good way in terms of like um, respecting your, your work and your art and your craft. That's interesting. I, it happened a lot for me that I thought, oh, I have a weird feeling about this guy. And then in the end, it, it turned out to be um, to, to, to be a really bad experience. Um, I had people letting me work until the illust an illustration was half done and telling me hey, we, we don't need it anymore and we're not paying you. Stuff like that, of course. Um, the thing that, that happens from time to time, not so much anymore because I try to, to uh, cancel these, these or to, to identify these kind of, kinds of clients very often, uh, very, very early. But what happens very often and what I don't understand is um, you really often have people who want to work with you and then you find out that they want totally different style. So they, they say they, they say that they love your work and they hire you. And then um, in the process, you're realizing that they actually want a completely different direction of what you are standing for as an artist. And that's something I just can't get how this, this happens. I mean, they, they look at your work and I think it's probably they're losing some of like they're brave enough to work with you in terms of like they're committing to your style and in the process they think ah damn i can't i can't do it it's it's too it's too progressive or whatever you know it's uh, i have to go back to the boring old um stock stock illustration style or whatever and or they they realize that the meaning in the illustration isn't like what they expect it to be so they want to push more and more and more content and more meaning into an illustration that's what really happens super often so so when when they have a certain topic um they want to over explain it um through an illustration so they they ask you to add this and that and um elements after elements until it's it's just looking shit and it's not not attractive anymore um, that's that's a really common thing. Um, yeah, and you usually just try to talk to these people, right? And to try to convince them. And that's what I meant with consulting earlier. You're, um, that's, that's where the consulted in you comes out and tries to um, convince them of different direction. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. And in the worst cases, um, you stop working for someone, of course, or they stop working with you. <laughs> but it doesn't happen so often, uh, fortunately. There's also artists who are not easy to work with. For example, they're... I mean, I work with artists as well, and they're sometimes artists who do not accept that you have sometimes find, to find agreements and compromises for for an artwork because um, a client needs something to be done in a certain way and that's yeah that's kind of the discussion if you are you an artist or are you an illustrator but if you're an illustrator you should probably not take any commissions you know uh, and if you're an artist, who doesn't want anyone to interfere with your process you should probably be an artist and not an illustrator and not take commissions. All right, guys, um, I'm going to take a break now. And um, I think I will return to this one tomorrow or maybe not even tomorrow, but later this week because I have I have to meet the deadline of a certain producer of 
sports footwear <laughs> this week. Uh, we'll have a meeting tomorrow discussing the current state of the project after the, the holidays. And uh, there's still lots of work to do, but yeah, it's in a good way. Um, can't wait to show you what I'm what I'm working on right now for, for them. Uh, it's a big project, actually. One of the biggest, probably one of the biggest illustration projects I have ever done. So this is really exciting for me. But we're getting there. Um, and yeah. And the cabin, but the cabin will be ready for the drop in uh, nine days on January the 12th. Uh, and I will be, will be streaming, streaming more cabins. Probably I will do a coloring stream for one cabin. My camera is telling me that something is wrong, but you still see me, right? <laughs> okay, uh, I think so. Um, yeah, maybe I'll do a coloring session for for another cabin because I have to finish this one for the drop, obviously. But the one after has a bit more time. Uh, we'll see. I'll let you know. Um, thanks, guys, for the lovely chat today. Thanks for the for the quiz show, Elizabeth. <laughs> it was really nice. Um, and hope you'll have a, have a good rest of the first week of 23. I hope it will be a fantastic year for you all. And um, see you soon on Twitter, Instagram, Discord, etc. All right, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>